Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to call Objective C code. So, access an Objective C file from your Flutter dot project. So, you can do some native code if you've already got libraries built or there's something specific that has made its way into, let's say, Flutter and Dart here. Then you can use Objective C. If you want to know about Swift, I've got videos covering that. If you want to know about Kotlin and Java for the Android side for the native aspect. I've got video covering that as well. The first thing you want to do in your Dart file, go to the top. We need a new import. So we want to do import package, and it's this one here package colon flutter forward slash services dot dart. Need a semicolon. Now, if we scroll down to our class here, we need to create a channel, and this will be, you know, essentially the method, not the method, I should say, because that's going to be something else. It's almost going to be like the connection between the Dart file and the Objective C file. So we're going to do static const platform equals const method channel. And in here, we need to put a string. This string will basically be almost like the unique connection name. And it's, you know, it's recommended to use, you know, a package name format like com.flutter.epic. And then I always do like forward slash and then something. So that way I could, let's say, have connections go into this particular channel. And then if I wanted sort of like almost sub connection, sub channels, I could do it based on this. But again, the format of this doesn't really matter. This is just my preference. And now if we scroll down, we are going to create a method. And I'm just going to call it printy because it is going to get a value from Objective-C by calling the method. And that value will get printed out. So when this button is clicked and this is what we have so far obviously at the moment it does nothing but this will call the pointy method and in here what we need to do is say string value this will store the result of what we actually get you could store into an integer for example but you know it just depends on what you're doing so we have a try block you know this is going to try and do it so we can say value equals I uh, forgot this needs to be async so a sync it's a nice spell at first and this needs to be await platform dot invoke method printy like so and we just need the catch block and I'm going to print out the error if we get you know any we shouldn't do and here I'm going to print out the value so now what we need to do is we're all done for the actual dart side we need to actually implement the native objective C code to do that go to the iOS folder go to runner and you want to go to app delegate.m so double click that you can add the code directly here but the IntelliSense and the recommendation and you know the highlighting is not very good. I actually have a lot of confidence that IntelliJ and Google will put those features into this Android Studio and into the IntelliJ IDE because the the built-in stuff for Java and Kotlin going between one and the other is fantastic. You're literally able to get some Java code, copy it into a Kotlin file your pop-up saying, do you want to convert it? And you actually convert the code. I think you're going to get features like that. It's not available yet, but I think that's just my opinion. So what you want to do is click on this button, open iOS mod join Xcode. And what you'll do is open up your Xcode project. And from here, you could run it, but we're just interested in editing it. And you want to go to the app delegate.m. So once you've got this open, what you need to do is, first of all, you need to do hash include flutter for slash flutter dot h so this will allow us to use some flutter features and at the start of this application method which just gets called when it's you know launched we are going to say 
flutter view controller and we're going to call this a controller equals to flutter view controller it's going to be self dot window dot root view controller semicolon now what we need to do is create the channel and the channel will be the same as what we just created here not the same code but the same name so you do flutter method channel asterisk channel equals flutter method channel do method channel with name and the method channel with name that first part is going to be a string and i would recommend literally going in here what happened there and just copying this because that's you want this to be exact so this will allow us to you know detect any you know sort of requests via that particular channel and for the binary messenger you just need to specify the controller that we just created and now we can actually check if you know some sort of connection has been made to this channel but to do that you just say square brackets channel set method core handler and this is going to be flutter method core flutter result in result so this will get triggered when something you know some communication comes along this channel so now what we want to do is detect uh, what's this number expected an expression so let's have a look channel set method call handler flutter method call asterisk call ah see the problem the square bracket is going to be over here semicolon okay so now what we need to do is actually detect which method we've used and the method is this name right here and to check for that we just say if square brackets i'm going to put a string in here i'm going to say printy so this needs to match whatever you put in here so if you put brackets in here make sure you put brackets in there because it literally is just a string even though it is essentially a method it's just a string and now what we're going to say still inside the brackets and say is this equal to this other string and the string that we're comparing it to is core dot method so this core dot method we can check and that way we can have multiple method calls within this single channel and in here we're going to return a value and the value that i'm going to return or the way you return a value you don't put return you say result and this will get returned back to this location so i'm just going to say hi from objective dash c so if i save this here go back here what you want to do is shut down the application if it's already run, running rerun it or re-debug it because that will not only do the dart stuff that will also rebuild iOS and Android as well. So hot reload and hot restart does not work if you make any changes on the iOS side. If the changes are on the Dart side, then that's fine. Okay, so it's syncing the files. Now if I click this, as you can see, we get high from Objective C. There is nothing to do with that on this file. It communicated with the objective see the ios side and it returned this you might be thinking how about if we wanted to send parameters as you know they are pretty common functionality with functions don't worry we are going to cover that in the next video if you have any questions though feel free to pop me a message and as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next video